Thank you very much. I, I'm going to lay out 10 basic steps for what one might want to do if one wanted to start a high-tech device company. Uh, this is not necessarily apply, this is not like a cookie cutter, you have to do all of these things, but it is a general rule of some things that you would want to think about uh, if this is a path you want to take. <coughs> so, uh, uh, Rachel, I think, uh, talked a little bit about my background. Um, when I started out, I was working for large companies. The biggest one was Alcon Surgical in a, a, in a design group there. And although very fascinating and interesting work, uh, the large company dynamics and corporate structure uh, didn't really suit me. So I started looking around for uh, startup companies, little startup companies. This would have been the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And, um, and found those were a lot more exciting, a lot more interesting for what I wanted to do. At these companies, I met some really smart people and some really successful people. And I started talking to them about how they started things and the ideas that they had. And so it branched on, and then I decided I had my own idea. I met Dr. Jin, who is, uh, who is uh, gonna be giving a talk after me, and we had some really good conversations. I had a neat idea for a way to treat mental disorders using magnetic fields. Uh, Dr. Jin was using a device already, and I decided, and I came up with a way of making it smaller and cheaper and more portable. And so I thought, this is something you can use in the home. What a great idea. We should give it a try. Um, in addition, uh, we started a few other companies. Uh, Dr. Jin and I started the Brain Treatment Center. That is a clinic that treats autism and other mental disorders using magnetic fields. Uh, PJ Med, we started together. Uh, it's uh, not everything is a, is a big win. Uh, this was a company that was going to do flu prevention uh, you, by removing the bacteria from the tongue. Uh, didn't really work because it needed too large of a clinical trial and we weren't able to get that going. Uh, Logipace was an interesting one. Um, I was, uh, we do a lot with brain rhythms and rhythms of the body. And I had this idea, I said, okay, well, uh, what if, as an athlete, what if I were to um, match my, match my uh, pace of my running with my heartbeat? What if I got those in sync? Would it maybe improve my athletic performance? And so had some ideas there and actually ran with it and that's actually made an app out of it. It's on sale at the iTunes store right now. You check that out if you're interested. Um, and then NanoStim, uh, my former boss, uh, we had an idea of, um, you know, an implantable pacemaker. Um, we said, well, let's take the pacemaker and make it really tiny, like a little pill, and then actually insert that into the heart. We'll actually affix it to the inside of the heart, and it'll pace the heart that way. So that was a really cool idea. We went ahead and got uh, we got going on that. I did a lot of the research on that and got it moving. I actually left that company to start the last company, Neosync, uh, but that company just got bought by St. Jude Medical. So that was a big win. Um, uh, Neosync is a, de a device company, like I say, small device to treat mental disorders using magnetic fields. So I'm gonna go through the 10 steps. First step is you have an idea. Lots of, uh, in, your, in your work or in your school when you're going to college and things like that, you're gonna come up with different ideas, different ways of, of solving a problem that's new and unique. And you have to look at what is it unique and who is gonna buy it and can you make money? These are things that you really have to think about hard when you think about making a medical device company. This is like an original idea that I had for the Neosync using magnetic fields on their brain. That actually isn't a real picture. The guy's not that happy. Uh, the, the bottom one is dealing with some of the rhythms of the brain, heart, and lungs, and pacing that I use for logic pace. So the best ideas do come with areas you're familiar with. So if it, an idea is, if you're going to join a company, if you're going to start with a company, go into a company that's doing stuff that you're passionate about. Because then you're going to get ideas of ways to, to improve that, and you can possibly start your own. So step two, you've got to research the idea. For example, for, um, for Neosync and for NanoStim, I spent easily 40 to 60 hours on the internet. I became an expert in everything having to do with that area. There's something called freedom to operate. Freedom to operate means if somebody else has patented the idea that you just had, you don't have freedom to operate. You have to get a license from the patent holder in order to do that thing. That's really important. So you can go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, their website, you can search for patents and look up and try to find uh, if there's anything in your area. 
Now, even if there's stuff in your area, maybe there's a tweak to it. Like for, for Neosync, there was already a device out there using magnetic fields to treat patients. I just came up with an idea to make it smaller and portable. So I just came up with a different twist, and that's, that's still fine. You're okay then. Uh, also, do not quit your day job yet. Keep working wherever you are. Okay, uh, step three, protect the idea. There's something called a provisional patent application. A provisional patent is essentially, I want to put a stake in the sand and say, this is my idea and nobody else can use it except for me. Uh, you need to write every possible thing you can think about about that idea. When I was doing LogiPace, for example, LogiPace, okay, you match your pace to your heartbeat. I think that's a pretty cool idea. We did a study and actually found that it did improve run times of, 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 uh, of runners over three miles by like 35 to 45 seconds. So we're really excited about it. So I started thinking, okay, well, I could do it for swimming. I could do it for biking. I could do it for rowing. I could do it for dancing. I could do it for aerobics. Uh, you could put it in an iPhone app. You could use it something else that you carry. You could have it something that you wear on your head that plays this sound. You can have it in a, uh, on a treadmill. So in my provisional app, I thought of every possible way this could be d done, and I put it all down in that app. So it's really inexpensive. It costs about $130 to file it online. Big, big thing you need to know, after a year, it's lost. In other words, if you don't do anything with it, after a year, your idea is gone. You can't even use it because it will become prior art and you won't be able to actually even file a patent on it. You'll need to file a, tr a, a regular utility application on that same idea within a year, otherwise you're going to lose it. Also, don't assume that you're completely covered and don't talk to a lot of people about it unless you have, unless they sign something called a non-disclosure agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can look that up. It's essentially, they're promising not to talk about your idea. Okay, step four, writing a business plan. <coughs> business plan has to be incredibly detailed. You have to fit everything. When I wrote a business plan for Neosync, it was 50 to 60 pages long. I thought of every possible step. When do I need money? How much do I need? What's my rent going to be? How much of my computer is going to cost? Am I going to have to hire someone like a contractor? Am I going to, what's my insurance going to be? Do I need insurance? Uh, when am I going to have a prototype? I have to define a timeline and a budget. And it takes a long time, but you've got to be incredibly detailed. <coughs> and you might say, well, I have no idea how much this stuff is going to cost. I don't know what I'm going to need. You need to guess, or you need to talk to people and get ideas of what you're going to need. It's okay to guess on some stuff, not everything, but it's okay to guess on some stuff because it's understood. You just need to have a plan, something to work for. Any investor is going to insist on a business plan, and it's going to need to be very detailed. Don't, whoops, don't quit your day job yet. Okay, step five, making a prototype. This is an example of a prototype I did for Neosync that generates these magnetic fields. This is a wooden box, and this is a little plastic a fixture that is affixed to the side that will treat patients with, with uh, uh, mental disorders like major depression. So I used my own, we, we used our own money, we built this thing, we tested it, we checked it all out. This is like an early version of that uh, LogiPace uh, app. Um, it needs to look nice and it needs to be as functional as possible. You need to use your own money because nobody's going to give you money without s you showing that you can do what it is you're wanting to do. Uh, and get feedback from people. See whether they uh, might change the design or you might get positive feedback you can talk to investors about. So next you got to find the money. Angel investors are great. Venture capital, harder to do. Bank loans, very easy if you have equity, meaning like you own your home. But it's not my first option because you're, in, you're it's a high risk for you. Uh, as an example, for Neosync, I said, uh, I had this idea. I went to my old CEO from my old job. I talked to him about it. He pointed me to talk to another guy. I also talked to my old boss, who I started NanoStim with. He told me, you know, there's this guy over at Life Science Angels. You should give, you should talk to him. Go to this conference, because they know he's going to be there. Went to the conference, talked to him. He's like, oh, this is really good. We're interested, but you know, you should talk to this other guy. So I talked to another guy who said, well, it's not what we do. He was from a venture capital called New Leaf Ventures. He said, it's not what we do, but there's a guy at Boston Scientific who loves this stuff. Talk to him. So I went and I talked to the guy at Boston Scientific and, uh, and wound up getting money for the, uh, for the business. So in other words, you have to talk to a lot of people, knock on a lot of doors. 
So elevator speech. You need to be able to tell people quickly what it is you're, you do, how it's going to make money, and when you're going to make money. Now then, even if they say, yeah, that's interesting, they're going to have experts do due diligence. They're going to tell, they're going to dig into you, your background, as well as the idea. And let's say during your research you found somebody had patented the idea uh, and you decided not to mention that or to push it aside. If they find out about it, you're not going to get the money and they're going to talk to other investors. It's much better to present everything up front, be totally honest about all the risks that they'd be taking making that investment. So next is a term sheet. If they say it's great, they love you, they want to invest, the thing you got to get ready for is that you're going to give up a lot of your business. You may give up more than 50% of your company just with that first investment. So you just need to be prepared. Also, they may ask you to make changes. My company, Neosync, was originally called Theraflux, which I thought was an awesome name. Thera like therapy and flux like magnetic flux. I even made the U make look like a magnet. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, my, the investor said, I will not invest in Theraflux. I will only invest if you change the name. And interestingly, I had no problem changing the name. <laughs> uh, he also said, I will not invest in it unless it looks like this. And he drew a picture. And I'm like, you know, I had that same idea. We're going to do exactly what we're doing. <laughs> so, um, so you may wind up having to move. You may wind up having to change things. You may not be in the charge of the company. They may put somebody else in charge that, you, that they trust, especially if you haven't done it before. So even after signing the term sheet, the money's not going to come for another four to six months. It takes, there's a lot of legal rigmarole that they have to go through and documents you have to sign. So don't quit your day job yet. Okay, getting the money. Yay, you got the money. This is really time to party because it's rare. Getting a, getting a startup all the way where you can actually get money, you wouldn't believe the number of startups that founder because they just can't get anybody interested enough or their business is not marketable enough to actually make an investment. Also, you didn't win the lottery, don't expect to you know, go and buy a fancy car or something like that. All you really got is the right to work really, 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 really hard. You may quit your day job when the money is in the bank. Okay, so step 10, you're off and running. The big thing you gotta know here is you're responsible for everything. When I started uh, Neosync as an example, I had to figure, okay, I gotta lease a space, I gotta buy computers, I have to buy furniture, I have to do, I have to buy computers. Everything about that doesn't get done unless you do it yourself. You won't have a receptionist, you won't have a fancy office, you may not even have a salary. So, you're gonna live really cheap. You're gonna wanna keep tra track of all your cash on hand. If you get desperate, if you use it all up, then you're desperate. And desperate is not a good thing to be when you're looking for money because they will take much more of your company just to give you more money. Be on time and be under budget. So investors are gonna want frequent updates. I had to invest, I have to update my investor weekly with Neosync. Uh, a, a long email, exactly how much money I had, what I spent it on, and what I was gonna spend the money on next week. I need to be honest at board meetings. If there's going to be a schedule slip, they need to know early. Okay, what can you do beforehand if you're interested, if this sounds like a cool thing to do? Well, majoring in a technical field in college obviously helps because you get ideas about uh, different ways of, of improving design. It doesn't have to be. You can also be a specialist in business or medical and team up with someone who is actually more of an expert in the design area. Technical writing and speaking skills are essential. If you can't write really well and really professionally, and if you can't speak very well to a group, um, then you will not get funded. You will not, your business will not proceed well. You'll, you'll definitely founder. Um, so work at high tech companies, find ways to make their products better, get to know people. Knowing people at the companies you're at or the school you're at, professors work with companies all the time. Getting to know these people and know who they work with and getting a knowledge about the industry is critical. Talk over ideas with smart people at these companies, find out ways to improve those products, and then find an idea of your own and then go for it. An MBA is not required, obviously it doesn't hurt, but it's not required to do this. So, one last note. Don't start a high-tech device company if your sole purpose for starting it is to get rich, because it's probably not gonna happen. 
90% of them are going to fail. Uh, even if you succeed, you may wind up giving away so much of the company in order to get enough money to succeed, it, you, may, you, may be, you may not get rich, either, you may not make all that much either. Um, when, when a company goes IPO or gets bought, the founders typically own less than 10% of the company. Like for example, with Neosync, I currently own only 15% of the company. But starting out, uh, Dr. Jen and I own 50% each. We were, you know, life was great. But as we needed more money to do more stuff, we gave away more of the business. Um, so, uh, but starting a high-tech device company, either in medical or consumer, it can be an amazing experience. It can be really rewarding. So if that interests you, I highly recommend uh, at least uh, considering and following that path. I think. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your.